Hey everyone, so I'm starting this video a little bit early because tomorrow we are going to see Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. I'm very excited. I actually haven't seen the uh, the, the last two Indiana Jones movies. I've only seen Raiders of the Lost Ark and Temple of Doom. So I'm actually currently watching The Last Crusade, which is why I'm starting this video early. So I'm not the biggest Indiana Jones fan. However, I want to see this movie just because I like seeing movies, but also because this is John Williams' last film that he is composing before he retires. And so I really wanted to see it for that reason. And also I just love Harrison Ford. He's, he's just so much fun. So I'm excited to see it. So I'm just getting myself all caught up watching The Last Crusade. And then I'm going to try to get in Kingdom of the Crystal Skull tomorrow before we go see it. We will watch the new Dial of Destiny and I'm excited for it and I'm very excited for the score. That's probably the thing I'm most excited for but either way Indiana Jones. We are on our way to Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Woohoo! We're both wearing kind of well you're wearing an Indiana Jones shirt. I'm wearing my music by John Williams shirt. Started Kingdom of the Crystal Skull today and I did not finish it before we had to leave. I don't know still yet why everyone hates it because I haven't finished it. But I'm excited for this movie. But well, you did watch Last Crusade. I right? did. I watched Last Crusade last night. And now the last Indiana Jones movie and the last John Williams movie. We'll talk to you tomorrow after we see it. Goodbye. Okay, so it's been a few days since we've seen Indiana Jones The Dial of Destiny. So let's talk about it. I'll tell you the things I liked about it, things I didn't like about it, and we'll get into a few spoilers. So I feel like I need to start this by stating the obvious that I a thousand percent only went to see this movie because it is John Williams' last film that he is composing before he retires from film. Up until two days before we saw this movie, I had only seen Raiders of the Lost Ark and The Temple of Doom. And I saw Raiders of the Lost Ark maybe like five years ago, but I watched Temple of Doom when I was probably like... 10 years old and it terrified me. It terrified me so much so that I didn't want to watch any of the other Indiana Jones films and it wasn't until I was into my late 20s that Sam was like well that one is scary but the rest aren't so let's watch Raiders of the Lost Ark. So we did, I liked it and then I hadn't watched any of the other ones. Literally the Thursday before we saw this movie I finally sat down and watched The Last Crusade and then I started watching Kingdom of the Crystal Skull on the Friday before we saw it but I didn't finish it and I actually still haven't gone back and finished it. I will, I plan on finishing it. I have to say Last Crusade is probably my favorite. I just really loved the dynamic between Harrison Ford and Sean Connery. I thought they made for a fabulous father-son duo. So I really liked The Last Crusade. Had a lot of like funny moments in it. And when Dial of Destiny does come out on DVD, I definitely want to have a few movie nights and watch all five of them and give like a definite ranking of all of them. Because as of right now, I think The Last Crusade is my favorite, but I really want to rewatch all of them and finish Kingdom of the Crystal Skull and really give them a ranking to where they fall in like a scale of one to five out of all of them. But with all of that being said, did I enjoy Dial of Destiny? Yes. Yes, I did. I loved it. I thought it was so fun. In just recently watching The Last Crusade, I like Last Crusade better, but I still think this is really good and it holds up as an Indiana Jones film. So things I really liked about this movie, obviously the casting is like top notch. I love Harrison Ford. I just absolutely love his like cockiness and his like swagger. I just think he's such a fabulous actor and I love him. Harrison Ford as Indiana Jones, beautiful, amazing, will never be outdone ever. Mads Mikkelsen as the main villain, amazing. I love Mads Mikkelsen. He can do literally no wrong in my eyes. And then we have the return of John Rhys Davies as Sala, which I'll get a little bit more into in my dislikes of this movie but Sala is definitely my favorite character throughout the franchise 
besides Indiana Jones. I was very happy to see his face in this movie. And then some new people. We had Antonio Banderas in this movie. He was fantastic. We love a gorgeous, beautiful, sexy Spanish accent. Phoebe Waller-Bridge played Helena, who is Indiana Jones' goddaughter. And I really liked her character because she constantly had me on my toes of who she was kind of playing for because when she first emerges into the film she is saying one thing and then she goes to another thing and she was lying the whole time but then she sort of keeps like switching things up and it's like hey where is she actually falling in this in the sense of what's her end game and I really liked that about her I thought she did a fantastic job definitely just had me guessing the whole movie which I really liked and then we had the actor Ethan Isidore play a character named Teddy who was kind of our like young sidekick that Indiana Jones always has. When I like to think of Indiana Jones having like a young sidekick, Short Round obviously comes to mind immediately, but I think Teddy was really really great. He's not necessarily Indiana Jones's sidekick if you've seen the movie however he just did a fantastic job this was such a physically demanding role to play and he just did an incredible job I think he's only like 16 years old so like well done you did fantastic props to you and I can't wait to see you in more films obviously the score was amazing John Williams kills it as always I've already downloaded the soundtrack and I've been listening to it and honestly it just makes me sad knowing that this is John Williams last film that he will be composing I know he's 91 he's an old man he very much deserves to retire and he has even said that he is so happy that this is his last film he is composing because he's had so much fun with the Indiana Jones franchise he feels like this is a great way for him to leave the business and I think that's great for him and I'm so happy Happy for him and I'm sad for myself that I we may not get any new John Williams compositions ever again but I have almost all of his compositions on my phone and I listen to them very frequently it just makes me sad that he's done but he's 91 he very much deserves to retire but I'm gonna miss him I'm gonna miss his compositions and I'm just so happy that he was so happy that this is the movie that he is finishing on it's a beautiful score. Amazing. I love it. I don't want to say too too much about the plot with because I feel like anything I say will kind of give stuff away. So I'll just say when we were very first watching this movie and during certain scenes I kind of thought this seems a little out there. <laughs> Which I'll get into my thoughts on that in my spoilers. But the more I thought about it, I was like, this is an Indiana Jones film. It's supposed to be out there. Like, he found the Ark of the Covenant. He found the Holy Grail. He discovered aliens. He was cursed by voodoo. It's supposed to be out there. Indiana Jones just isn't a normal guy. <laughs> And speaking of like getting cursed by voodoo and all this stuff, he did make one reference to that in the film which I thought was funny. He's trying to climb this really steep cliff and Helena is just like making her way up there and she's kind of joking about his age. And he's like, it's not just my age, you try getting cursed by voodoo and doing this. Which I thought was fun that we had this kind of little bit of a nod back to the old films. One thing that I really liked about this movie, and I also realized watching The Last Crusade and what I did watch of Kingdom of the Crystal Skull as much as I could watch before we had to head to this movie. These movies are not gory at all. There is zero blood which I appreciate. Obviously Temple of Doom is pretty spooky and scary so I didn't like it growing up but watching these three movies in particular The Last Crusade, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull and The Dial of Destiny obviously people are killed in ways but there's no blood which I appreciate so I feel like this is a great action movie. Maybe not Temple of Doom until kids are a little older but I feel like this is a really good like action franchise that kids can watch once they're like I don't know maybe like 10 and up and stuff because obviously people still do get killed and die in these movies but there's no 
blood or anything there's no very like gory deaths or anything maybe not temple of doom maybe save that one when your child is older but i feel like this is a great movie like if you have a little kid who really likes like action and stuff i feel like this is a great film to kind of like get them started with because it's not over the top bloody gory violent or anything like that maybe not like little kids but i definitely think these are great films for like 10 and up to start watching if they're into like action films so for my complaints uh like i said at first i was kind of like skeptical of the plot but i kind of thought about it and i was okay with the plot afterwards but my one biggest complaint i have is that john reese davies and antonio banderas were in this movie so little like very little like i said sala is probably my favorite character in this franchise next to indiana jones and i was so excited when i heard that he was coming back for this film and when you first see him in the film i was over the moon excited and then the fact that that's basically all you get of him i was very disappointed i was like no 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 go with him go with him and be on an adventure together no 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 you have to go and i was very upset that that was all we got and similarly with Antonio Banderas he was in this movie so little I know they didn't really like promote them very much but we did know that they were going to be in this movie Saul is a little bit different because we know him and so we know his like wit and his mannerisms and stuff and I really wanted that more in the movie where I feel like with Antonio Banderas character because he hasn't been in anything else I wanted to know more about him and he just seemed like this really like complex character that had a lot going for him and I wanted to know so much more and then he was in and he was out but other than that I actually like really enjoyed this movie for like what it was and I'm really excited for this movie to come out on DVD and re-watch all of them because now I can say I've watched all of them with the exception of finishing <laughs> Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. I can't wait for this movie to come out on DVD and I'm going to sit down and watch all five of them. Probably not in the same day, but watch all five of them and give a like definite ranking of which one I liked best to least. So now I'm gonna get into my spoilers of this movie. So if you haven't seen this movie, this is where I would click out. Or if you don't care, you can stick around to hear my thoughts on the ending of this film. So if you are gonna have Head out thanks so much for watching and my last notes for you would be if you like Indiana Jones films a thousand percent go check this out it is so much fun it was really good really well done a great way to end the franchise like I said if you have children like I'd say 10 and up who are into action films I definitely think this is a great place to kind of start because like I said it's not too violent not too gory or anything so I think it's a great place to start but anyway if you're gonna head out here thank you so much for watching I'll see you next week but if you're gonna stick around for spoilers let's continue on so like I said the plot they go back in time which like I said at first I was sitting there thinking like really this is what we're doing we're going back in time but again, I thought about it and I was like, okay, hey, really? What hasn't Indiana Jones done? It makes sense for him. He always does these very eccentric, crazy things. And I think this just kind of fits his MO and it just makes sense for him. So I was okay with him going back in time. It very much suited the character that is Dr. Jones and his adventures. I was also very happy with Helena's choice at the very end of this film to punch him in the face and knock him out and bring him back to the present. Because if you watch the movie, even if you haven't watched the movie, they meet Archimedes when they go back in time and Indiana Jones is trying to tell him that he wants to stay there and he wants to stay with Archimedes. However, Helena is telling him, you can't stay here because he was shot. He needs to get home to the present where they have proper medicine and they can heal him and he'll be okay. If he stays there, not only will he die, but he will very, very mess up 
everything to come in the future because he won't exist in the future anymore. And I think just because he's sort of like delusional from maybe blood loss or something that he just is is not thinking clearly but he's saying like I want to stay with you Archimedes, I want to stay here, there's nothing for me back in the present and Helena is trying to convince him, trying to convince him and she's telling Archimedes do not tell him that he can stay, he cannot stay. And so finally she punches him in the face to knock him out and then when he wakes up he's back home in the present. And I was so happy with that. When I was thinking that he was going to stay I was like oh no. I was like I please don't. Please don't do this. No 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 no. This would be such a stupid decision for him to stay. And I get why he kind of thinks he wants to stay because in the movie you learn that his son went off to war and died in the war and because of that it ultimately ended his relationship with Mirian which obviously is very devastating to him so he feels like there's nothing for him in the future but Helena is telling him you still have to come back you will completely mess up the entire future and timeline if you stay if you don't come back and I think he's just tired, he's delusional with for blood loss, and he's just not thinking clearly when he's thinking he wants to stay. I was just thinking, I was like, if he stays, this is going to be the worst ending ever. And so I was very, very happy when Helena was like, nope, I'm taking this into my own hands, and just punches him, knocks him out, and brings him into the future. I also was very happy that she actually brought him back to like exact present time. At first, I kind of thought that she was going to bring him back before his son left for the war because when they're hunting for Archimedes' dial, they both kind of ask each other, like, if you had the ability to go back in time, what would you change? And he says, I would change and tell my son not to go to war because if he goes to war, he'll die and it'll ultimately end me and his mother's marriage. So I kind of thought as well that maybe Helena would have brought him back to that time so that he could tell his son that. But I really liked that she didn't, that she did bring him back to normal time, but also that she brought Mirian back into his life so that they could try to rebuild their relationship without their son. And I thought that was absolutely beautiful and I was very happy with that ending. Speaking of Helena, even though I absolutely loved that she did all of this at the end, there were certain parts of this movie that I was like, ugh, I can't be Team Helena because you're being like this. So like I said when I was first describing her character, how I mentioned she kept me on my toes as to who she was working for, what she wanted, what her end game was. There's one scene in particular where someone, I'm not gonna say who, but if you've seen the movie, you know, someone is killed literally right in front of them, in front of her and Indy and Teddy, and it's someone really close to Indy. This person is killed and then they eventually escape from Mads Mikkelsen and the Nazis. She's all, happy that they escaped and, and then Indiana Jones just kind of says to her he's like my friend was just killed in front of us and she's just acting happy that they got away like yes it's great you got away but like have a little sympathy for this character that was literally just killed in front of you. It was things like that that made me like not like her character but then this whole ending scene trying so hard to convince him to come back with her to the present taking it completely into her own hands when he was being delusional about staying just taking it into her own hands to bring him back to the future and then like i said i really liked the fact that she didn't choose to go to the past where he could have stopped his son i liked that she brought him to the present where he could get back his happiness even though bad things have still happened. Well, I really liked her ending. There was parts of this movie that I was like, uh, no, stop it. Stop being so selfish and horrible. But I feel like she redeemed herself. I feel like she did. My very last thing I will say about this movie is, yes, I really liked the ending, but I absolutely loved the very, very, very last moment of this movie where we see Indiana Jones' famous fedora hat. It's hanging on like the clothesline outside of his apartment to dry. And the very last shot of this movie is it kind of just like pans into a circle. I don't know the exact words because I don't know filming or anything, but it just kind of like pans.
hands into a circle framing his hat and I feel like it was supposed to be like symbolic of Indiana Jones has finally hung up his hat and he is no longer this like adventurer or archaeologist and stuff like that but then at the very last moment of this movie before it fades to black you see his hand reach out from the window and pull the hat off the line back into the apartment and I just loved that I feel like it's just kind of like he will never be done Indiana Jones will never ever hang up his hat he will never be done and I loved that I thought it was such an incredible ending I loved it so much so that is going to be it I really liked this movie I thought it was really good and I really can't wait for it to come out on DVD to have a movie night and watch all five of these and just watch these as an adult because like I said it's been probably about four or five years since I watched Raiders of the Lost Ark and it's been well over 15 years since I've seen Temple of Doom so I'm really excited to watch all five of these and just really immerse myself in it because you know what I love Harrison Ford I love Steven Spielberg Indiana Jones John Williams just everything about these movies so I'm excited to rewatch these once this movie comes out on DVD and like I said I totally recommend this if you are a Indiana Jones fan I think it was fantastic so that is going to be it for now thank you guys so much for watching this video if you liked it I would love it if you would like and subscribe I post new videos every single Friday and I would love to have you here thank you for watching I'll talk to you later bye everybody